How's it going guys? Recently I've had a lot of people ask me how they can try and successfully break into the software engineering industry even if they didn't major in computer science in college or maybe they didn't even go to college. So today I want to give you guys my tips on how you can successfully break into the software engineering industry even if you didn't graduate college, even if you didn't major in college, and even if you didn't go to a boot camp. So let's get into it. Alright guys, so just a little bit of background about me. If you guys are new to the channel, my name is Kevin and I'm currently a software engineer at a startup in New York City. So I've gone through the process, I know what the interview process is like, I've been rejected from tons and tons of uh, companies and I've actually gotten you know, a handful of different offers. So I've been pretty well acquainted with the interview process. I cover a ton of interview questions if you guys are interested in checking out those videos. But today I really want to talk about how you guys can try and break into the industry even if you don't have the ideal experience. So the first thing that I think is super, super important to actually try and give yourself the best chance of becoming a software engineer is just how you prepare. So this is what I'm calling the preparation phase. And obviously, like it sounds, you need to prepare. So I think the first thing that I would really recommend for people who are trying to become a software engineer is just to pick up a single language. And I think a lot of people get distraught over the fact that they only know one language or they don't know enough languages, but I think it's super important to just know one language really, really well as opposed to knowing bits and pieces of five to 10 different languages. And it's funny because I actually think this is a very common misconception. I actually had this misconception in college uh, when I was younger, and I thought that I need to know a handful or a multitude of languages to actually be a good software engineer. When in reality, I think it's way better, and I've had people tell me who are older, hey Kevin, it's way better to actually just understand one language super in depth, because it shows that you're actually super proficient in that language and you understand maybe the underlying things that are going on underneath the hood, as well as more complex topics in computer science. Because if you just know, you know bits and pieces of different languages, chances are you only know the fundamentals of those languages and probably only the fundamentals of programming. So my first tip is definitely to just understand one language, study one language super hard, and try and get to know that language inside and out. So you guys can do that in a variety of ways. You guys can check out YouTube videos. You guys can buy books. You guys can buy a class online. There's tons of different resources out there. Pick whatever works best for you and learn one programming language super, super well. The second thing that you definitely need to do in the preparation phase is build a portfolio. So if you're lucky enough to have a college degree, maybe even in computer science, but you're having trouble actually getting a job, you're probably at an advantage just because your degree is pretty much like a testament to the fact that you should have the skills or the primary things that you need to to become a software engineer. So if you're not as fortunate and maybe you, you know, haven't come from a boot camp where you actually you know, maybe majored in journalism or didn't even go to college, the thing that you need is you need a portfolio. And so a portfolio is really gonna stand in place of that degree. So again, it's just gonna vouch for you and basically be a testament to the fact that you know what you're doing and you have the skills available to be a good software engineer. So ideally your portfolio is a way in a place to display all the projects that you've done and built using those skills that you're gonna need on the job. So I definitely recommend you know, compiling a list of projects that hopefully you've done that are challenging, that are interesting, and that, you know, display the fact that you have the fundamentals of computer science so you could be a successful software engineer. Once you actually have those projects, I definitely recommend aggregating them somewhere, putting them in one place, whether it's on your own website you've built ideally, or maybe on something like GitHub so that the world, and more specifically recruiters, can actually go to see your work. So that takes care of the preparation phase, guys. The next phase after the preparation phase is what I'm calling the application phase. And just like what it sounds like, this is where you're actually gonna to apply to all the jobs that you're interested in. But before you actually apply anywhere, it's very important to make sure that your resume is both up to date and very well organized. The reason why it's super important for your resume to be well organized and up to date is just because you know recruiters might only look at your resume for about 30, 45 seconds before they decide we should interview Kevin or we shouldn't interview Kevin. So you guys need to make sure that your resume is in a format in, you know, in a length that is digestible it's easily readable, and it clearly states the most important things that recruiters need to know about you. Another thing that's very important with your resume is I would definitely make sure that all your verbs have the same tense. So typically what I'll do is I'll just put all the verbs on my resume in past tense to say that I've basically done those things successfully. And the other thing that I think is really important is just your formatting is consistent. If you guys use periods, make sure you guys use periods after all of the you know, bullet points that you have on your resume, and otherwise make sure you don't have any periods at all. I think it looks really unprofessional when you guys are, you know, basically putting out a snapshot of what you are and it's not really, you know, 
formatted well, it's kind of messy, it doesn't look great for an application. I think a really good way as well to just test your resume is just give it to a friend, give it to your parent, give it to a family member, and just say, hey, what do you actually get from this piece of paper about me as a candidate within 30 to 45 seconds? And basically glean from whatever they're saying how you need to change your resume. So now once your resume and your portfolio are totally in order, now it's time to actually fill out your applications. And so I recommend that you guys think about this from the beginning, but it's all a numbers game. Don't get discouraged from getting rejected, just apply to more places. There's tons and tons of companies that you guys can apply to, a lot of which are super easy to do. So make sure you're sending out applications and you're sending them out constantly. Also with your applications, I definitely recommend that you guys apply in the reverse order they are actually interested in the companies in. So if that doesn't make sense, let me explain. So what I'm saying is try and apply to the companies that you're least interested in first. So that this way, if you actually do get an interview with them, there's not a lot of pressure, you know, you feel pretty relaxed, and it basically gives you experience under your belt for the companies that you're then gonna interview with hopefully later that you care about a lot more. I definitely also recommend applying directly on company sites as well as places like LinkedIn, underdog.io, which basically takes your resume, sends it out to a handful of companies, and then they reply back if they're interested. And I definitely recommend checking out some GitHub repos that have really easy application processes. There's one that has, I think, like hundreds of companies that have easy applications. You guys can very quickly go through that entire list in that GitHub repo and fire off 100 to 200 applications. Now, let's talk about the fact that maybe you're struggling to actually get these interviews. If you're struggling to get these interviews applying through places like LinkedIn and direct company sites, I definitely recommend checking out the website Voila Norbert. And what basically this is gonna allow you to do is get any recruiter's email. So let me explain. So if you go to this site, what I recommend that you do is first go to LinkedIn. Okay, go to LinkedIn, let's say you wanna to apply to Google. Type in Google, find the employees. You can find a technical recruiter's name, take their name and plug it into Voila Norbert, and that will give you their personal email address. I think you get like 50 free searches before you have to pay, so use it wisely. But you could basically directly access a corporate email account. And with that email account, what you can do is you can send that person or that recruiter an email directly to their inbox. And basically in that email, I just recommend saying, you know, you're asking about this open position, you know, give a few sentences, almost like a cover letter as to why you're interested in that position, why you'd be a great fit. And then just also attach your resume and what that'll help you do, guys, is it'll help you bypass any inbox filters that they have. Typically, if you apply to an application that's online, you're just going to get shuffled into an inbox along with thousands and thousands of other applications. So this will make sure that you guys go directly to the top of their inbox. Hopefully, they'll read it and hopefully they'll reach out saying that you look like a great fit for the role. So now you've applied to tons and tons of different places. Hopefully, you're hearing back. And now you're in the third phase, which is basically just the study phase. So this you know, phase is pretty self-explanatory, but first off, congrats on getting there. Hopefully, you know, if you're here, you've gotten multiple interviews, that would be ideal. And now it's time to actually prepare for each and every one of them. So the other thing that's great to mention and to think about now is you are on a level playing field with every other applicant. If you have an interview, you successfully have your foot in the door, and now you have a chance to actually get a job at this company. It doesn't matter if you went to Harvard or it doesn't matter if you struggled to graduate high school or even if you did. You guys are now on the same playing field and have an equal opportunity to land the job that you applied for. To ensure that you actually do the best that you can studying, I really, really recommend that you check out our website called LeetCode. If you guys have seen my channel, you guys know that I do tons and tons of these questions to try and help you guys prepare for your interviews. If you guys are not aware of LeetCode.com, it's basically a website that aggregates interview questions, groups it by company, basically allows you to practice those questions free of charge to try and you know get better and prepare for your interviews properly. This goes hand in hand with lead code, but I really recommend that when you do study, I recommend that you study hard and that you have a schedule. Try and make your study schedule goal oriented. By goal oriented, I mean make sure that you have checkpoints or ways to measure the success and the progress that you're making so that you can ensure that you're moving towards your goal at every single step in every single study session. By having goals when you study, it'll help track your progress and make sure that if you have an interview next Friday, you can cover all the things you need to between now and next Friday so you can succeed at your interview. When you're practicing, you should also make sure that you set a similar environment. What I mean by that is don't look at your phone, don't go on Facebook, take 30 to 45 minutes, simulate the real environment under the same pressure, the same time constraints, and allow yourself to fully and honestly attempt the problem that you have to make sure that you're simulating the real environment. Because in a real interview, you're not gonna be able to do those different things. 
you need to solve the problem then and there. So with that being said, guys, those are my tips for breaking into the software engineering industry and successfully becoming a developer. If you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful, do me a favor, leave the video a like and subscribe to the channel for more. And I'll see you guys next time. Yeah.